really excited. If you have your Bible, we're going to be going over some verses of Scripture in Exodus uh, regarding Moses and the children of Israel, and just a little bit about Noah briefly, and also the golden calf. If you guys remember that, the idol um, that, that was forged uh, together, the molten calf. So we'll be talking just a little bit about that tonight. All right, and like always, <clears throat> if you guys have anything you'd like to add or share, please unmute your mics and let your voices be heard at any time. It's always great to hear from you guys. So we're going to start in Exodus chapter 19, 1 through 2. And I, I really don't have a title today, and I kind of did, but I, I erased it. Um, but I, I know you guys will get the, the meaning of the topic here and what, what we're talking about, because we're really going to uh, hammer it home uh, tonight. So we're going to be starting Exodus chapter 19, 1 through 2 first. All right. So if you have your Bibles, you like to follow along. That's where we'll be starting. All right. It says in the third month. So someone say in the third month. So in the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, so they were only three months removed. The same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. So that's where we're at right here. We're setting the uh, the uh, um, kind of the plot, I guess you can say, the plot. So they're three months removed, you know, only three months removed from Egypt. So this just happened, removed from Egypt, removed from slavery. This one point, you know, uh, that we can take away from this verse is just that. They, they were newly delivered from Egypt, three months, okay? So verse two says, for they were departed from Rephidim, I think that's how you say it, and were come to the desert of Sinai and had a pitch in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mount. So here's the, the children of Israel right before the mount of Sinai, and they pitched their tents right at the base of the mountain, three months after being delivered from Egypt, from slavery and bondage. They're, they're newly, freshly delivered people of God, Okay. Exodus 9, 19 and 3. So the very next verse says, And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord God called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel. So the, here, here's he, God's preparing Moses to tell the children of Israel something. So here's what you notice here. Just like before, you know, with, with other men of God, God spoke directly with the man of God, you know, the, the man responsible for the leadership of God's people, you know, although God will speak to us, to man, man and woman directly at times, right? God speaks to us in certain ways, you know, and leading and guide us through the word of God, you know, but as children of God, we are each still under the guidance and direction of our leader, and that's our pastor, you know, this pattern of leadership has never and will never change. We're always going to have a pastor, we're always going to need a pastor. And just like the children of Israel here, they had a man of God. God's people will always have a man of God. And likewise, we, we are God's people. We are God's children. Um, we're always going to have and need a man of God. And we, we, that pattern will never change. And he tells Moses, you know, and, and he, um, he tells Moses right here. So, so God going to the man of God. He tells Moses right here, tell the children of Israel, say to your followers, these are my people. Here, here's what you're going to tell them. Verse 4 says, ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Tell them this. Okay? You know, God didn't just come out and say at this time, hey, uh, you know, I am God. I, I am that I am because he could have. No, instead he says, you see how I brought you out of Egypt. To so say, hey, do you remember what I brought you out of? you know, brought you out of your situation, you know, and not only did I bring you out, but I brought you unto me. That's what God is telling Moses to tell the children of Israel. He didn't just say, hey, you tell the children of Israel, tell them I am God. Well, he didn't do that right here. I mean, he will say that, you know, at, at times, or I am that I am. But he says, you tell them, remember that I brought them out of Egypt and I brought you guys unto myself. Don't you forget that. And so that's what he's saying. God is telling Moses to tell the children of Israel right here. Verse five says, now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice, that's that's huge, right? If ye will obey my voice, obey my word indeed and keep my covenant. So there's a second requirement. Then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. 
So what is peculiar mean well, right here means special. Is you obey my voice, keep my covenant, then ye shall be a special treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. If you obey my word and keep my covenant, you'll be a special treasure unto me above all people. And that's a big deal. God's people are highly favored, amen, above all people. Right? God's no respecter of person, but there is favor in the children of God. Those who obeyed, those are who are not only hearers of the word, but doers, right? We, we can know Acts 2.38, upside down, inside out, left and right. But, but if we can quote it, do we follow it? Have we obeyed? Have we received since we believed, right? They're, they're, that's, those are the highly favored people, the, 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 the people of God who have obeyed, amen his word or he says his voice right here but his voice is also his word so we look back to noah right noah was just and a righteous man in a time where the hearts and imaginations of men were only evil continually it's according to the word of god right the bible says that noah found grace in the midst of that there, there's still grace in the midst of 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 a world that we live in now right we got we got to know that to be true Right. Look at the world and how evil and wicked and the imaginations and the hearts of men were, 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 were just like the hearts of men at that time. But there were people, there was a man of God in this time who found grace in the eyes of the Lord in, in the midst of a time like that. Right. Noah's situation is very similar, you know, to the situation we are in now, where evil is filling the hearts and imaginations of men and women continually. Right, very, very similar. Right, the Bible says in Matthew 20, chapter 24, 37 through 39, it says, But as the days of Noah were, right, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. So up until that day, this is what they were doing. Up until that day, this is what people are doing until the second coming of God, until the rapture takes place, you, you see, and, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the son of man be. So they, there's a comparison there. You know, if there is one time that we need to be on the ark in the church, on that train that's bound for glory, that time is right now. The Bible says that these people who were living in sin knew not until the flood came and took them all away. They knew, right? This is a different definition of, it says they knew not until the flood came. They knew. They just didn't believe. They knew that the flood was coming, but they they didn't believe until it came, you know? And once it was here, it was too late for them. And the Bible says, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. You know, it's not like people won't know that Jesus is coming again. It's just that they don't want to believe or that they refuse to believe, or perhaps they feel as though I got time. I'm okay. You know, or, or you know, Hey, I believe in God. I, I believe in God was manifest in the flesh as Jesus. You know, he died for us on. I believe all that, you know, but at the same time, you know, have you received since you believed the gospel, you know, that that's the big thing. Have you received, have you taken action? Have you applied Amen. The blood of Jesus to you, you know, Noah, you know, you've been preaching the same old message for a hundred plus years. You keep saying that this great flood is going to come, you know, but I, I just don't believe it. Or, or if it's going to come, it should have come by now. Right? I think Noah built the flood over 120 years. So he was preaching, right. The message that, you know, that the flood is coming, you know, for such a long time, save yourselves, you know, but people might've been saying it's, it's a myth. It's a, it's a fairy tale. Look at this crazy guy how is how is it today you know it's the same type of deal today people will hear you know but they don't want to believe they don't want to receive or they're okay with where they're living right now you know, there's a lot of different factors and i don't want to say you know just this is how they are there's a lot of different reasons why people won't serve god you know you know god is telling us today the exact same thing that he was telling Mo, uh, um, moses here to tell the children of israel obey my voice Obey my word, keep my covenant, because I'm going to keep my uh, keep the covenant I have with you. You know, if you do so, you shall be a special treasure unto me, favored above all people. You know, we 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 are favored people. Verse six continues, and it says, "And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests 
and an holy nation. You know, these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. These are the words, specific words I want you to give your followers. You know, God, God, again, God uses the man of God uh, to speak to us sometimes. God can speak to us directly, but we need a man of God, right? God will go to the, the you know, to the man of God to give us a message to them sometimes. And that is preached on Sunday mornings, Sunday nights, on Tuesday, Tuesday midweek service, right? Continuing, it says, the Bible says in verse 7, and Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. You know, and here's the important part to remember for this study today. You know, and it won't be a long study today. Where we're kind of setting the foundation, kind of setting the plot to what we're going to be talking about just a bit today. So, so this is really important. So, so God gave Moses the, the message to give his people. Moses went to the elders and, and, and then he delivered the message to the people. You know, and it's in the verse eight says, and all the people answered together. So they were unified here in favor of God's word or the word that was going to be coming to them. And here's what the people, the children of Israel said together, unified. It says, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Remember those words. Says, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. So whatever God told you to tell us, Moses, we're going to do that. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. So Moses went back and said, hey, God, they said they're going to do what you said. They're going to keep your covenant. They're going to obey your voice. And, and, and the people says, yes, we're going to do just that. You know, so here's the children of Israel, freshly delivered from Egypt, right? They're just three months out, right? God has a word and a promise for them, which, which was delivered to them through the man of God. And they were all on board and says, yes, God, whatever you say, God, you know, we will do that. You know, how many times has this been us before, right? Fresh off a of miracle, fresh off of deliverance. You know, we're having our prayers and answered left and right. We're having praise reports and God's been good to me. And, and we're, we're, you know, and, and then we're all on board with, with the spoken word of God. God, whatever you want me to do, of course, I'm going to do it. Look how good you've been to me. Right. And, and but when when maybe God goes silent or, or we don't, you know, maybe, maybe that God doesn't go silent. We just maybe are not. Hey, I don't feel God. I don't feel close. You know, and we start wavering. Right. God's always close to us. Right. We, we have the holiest God's dwelling within us. You know, maybe emotionally, we're not always going to just feel like that. But but what is sustaining us knowing and knowing God's promises, you know, knowing that God's God's dwelling within us. And, and we're going to see here with the children of Israel how they would waver, right? There, there's, there, they get antsy. We shouldn't get spiritually antsy. We should know that God is with us. Lo, I am with you always, even, even unto the end of the, of the earth, the, the God says. So, you know, but God knows how fickle man can be. You know, we say man is just not men, it's women. Uh, human, man is in humanity. You know, it's talking about all men, you know, how fickle we can be. You know, they'll hear the word of God preached through the man of God one day. Then they're encouraged, they're uplifted, they're refreshed and, and such. But, but then they're getting spiritually restless just a couple of days later. You know, say we're, we're trying to live off of Sunday to Sunday or Sunday to Tuesday and then Tuesday to, to, to Sunday again. You know, and that's there's danger in that we cannot be living that way. You know, God even finished up here with Moses and says, I will come unto thee in a thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with thee and believe thee forever. You know, <clears throat> we had these people here. So God even, you know, added that in there, too, because God knows how people can be. You know, well, well did God really tell you to tell us that Moses, you know, prove it. God's like, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to approach you in a big old thick cloud. So that way they believe you, you know, God, God said, I will leave no doubt. They'll know because I'm going to come to you in a thick cloud. And God knows how people, how fickle people can be and, and, and how full of unbelief we can be sometimes, or, or we question everything. You know, at one moment we hear the word of God preached through the man of God. We're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We believe that. We believe that. And then that's in my heart and soul. And then the next day you're like, oh, you know, you start wavering and getting antsy and, you know, maybe we don't have a prayer life. Maybe, you know, there's different reasons as to why we're, we're like that. And there's also the adversary, but, but again, we're our biggest adversaries sometimes. So again, real quick, let's remember where we're at in this study today. So we're three months removed, the children of Israel, three months removed, you know, 
from over four centuries in Egypt. So they're, I mean, they, they were in bondage. That was their culture. That was, they, they are just not physical slaves, but they are spiritually enslaved. That's all, that is their identity. These people were an, an enslaved people. That's all they know. I'm a slave. I, 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 I'm oppressed and depressed, right? And they're three months removed from that. But God still delivered them from that, you know, but sometimes that's not enough. When God removes you, it's not enough to just set you free because sometimes we put ourselves right back into to enslavement. Sometimes there's a lot of good examples in the Bible that talks about that. But we're just going to focus here. So about 400, 420 years of enslavement, uh, the children of Israel were in Egypt, but they were just three months removed from here. You know, and a fresh word of God delivered through their man of God, you know, and the children of Israel together were all on board and said, all that the Lord had spoken, we will do. So remember that. They're saying, we're on board, God, whatever you want, we're going to do it. So we're going to fast forward from chapter 19 to, to chapter 31 real quick. So we're going to jump ahead uh, in, in, in time. So here's what it says, 31 and 18. It says, and he gave Moses. So, so this is God. And he gave Moses when he had made an ending end of communion with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of God. These are the, these are the 10 commandments written in stone. So here we have Moses, the leader called away to Mount Sinai to commune with God, right. And to receive these two tables of stone with the 10 commandments inscribed on them. Right. So, so he's doing what, what the man of God was supposed to do, go up and, and commune with God and, 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 and see what God had a word or something or the 10 commandments for his people. And he was going to take it back to them, you know, so he's up there for that time, you know, but that means the followers, you know, that the children of Israel were left with the secondary leaders, right. Which included uh, um, Aaron, you know, Moses, right hand man, you know, and other elders uh, um, of that group, you know, they're, they were placed under the charge of these leaders. Right. So remember that. So let's jump to Exodus chapter two, uh, 32 real quick. So we're going to jump there, 32 and 1. You know, so Moses is up on the top of Mount Sinai with God at this time, right? And, and does anyone know how long he was up there for a gift card? How long was Moses up there with God on Mount Sinai? Perfect. Who was that? Sister Roslyn? Yes. Perfect. You win a gift card. Yes, 40 days and 40 nights, right? Thank you very much. So 40 days, 40 nights, Moses is up there with God. So it's not a long time for him to leave his people. Plus, he left them in the leadership of Aaron and, and the elders and others. You know, but, but afterwards, after, well, we'll talk about this another time, maybe. Uh, Moses goes straight to Aaron and says, hey, why did you let the people do this? And so, so Aaron was the, the right-hand man at that time. So 32 and 1 says this. And when the people, these are the children of Israel, saw that Moses was delayed to come down out of the mountain, delayed 40 days, 40 nights, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron. You know, so here they are. They're still unified together, just like they were before when they said, hey, God, we'll do whatever you say. Right. So here they are unified together again, but not not for a good reason this time. You know, they're unified in a in a rebellion against God's spoken word and promises. And now they're going away. I know what God promised. And I said, well, I'm going to do and stick to that. But now now we're getting a spiritually antsy. Where is the man of God? You know, where is this Moses? And actually, they kind of say that. So they go, they go up to Aaron. They gather themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, up or get up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. We don't know what has become of Moses. Where is this guy? Where is our leader? Right. So they're getting antsy, you know, and, and like we said, Sister, Sister Rosalind. Um, I almost called you Sister Moses, <laughs> Sister Rosalind, 40 days and 40 nights. You know, it's amazing right here how quickly things change, right? We are fickle people. And, and you see here with the children of Israel, they got they got so antsy. And, and this this is more than just spiritually antsiness. You know, they, they were brought out of Egypt, but the Egypt was still within them, right? You know, we have a people here just weeks before saying all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. You know, has this been us before, you know, where we're going through a situation, you know, well, I haven't seen or heard from God in X amount of time. And in that time, 
the little G gods of this world start looking pretty good to this flesh. You know, how, how has that been in us sometimes? You know, where, where you know, um, my, my faith starts to waver and I start looking at, you know, external means for answers instead of internal means or just they that wait upon the Lord, right? We become spiritually antsy, I guess you can say. Not only that, they had been physically removed from Egypt Right, just like we were talking about, but Egypt still remained within them. The culture of Egypt still occupied their mind and their heart. It occupied their outward appearance as well. And I'll show you that in their next verse. Right. So these people were taken out of Egypt, but Egypt was still a, very much a big part of who they were, right? Because they're still trying to find their identity in a way. So they tell Aaron, get up, make us make us a God of worship. You know, I don't know where this Moses is at. You know, he's asleep on the job. I, he's up on Mount Sinai. I don't know what he's doing up there. Verse two says this. And Aaron said unto them, break off the golden earrings, which are in your, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons and of your daughters and bring them unto me. What an interesting verse of scripture. You know, someone might say, well, there you go. The children of Israel, God's promise, the, the, his people, right, were allowed to wear earrings and jewelry so can we someone someone might say say that but do we realize that they were dressed and adorned in jewelry the exact same way the egyptians were dressed right they were a part of egypt even though they were slaves they were still a part of egypt they worshiped the pagan idols and, and dressed the way they did and were enveloped in that culture and so of course they're going to look like this they're, they they still look like egypt right so they left egypt with whatever they had on and they still were looking like that. Not only that, there was a mixed multitude in there too. So what just wasn't the children of Israel it was a mixed multitude as well, <clears throat> right? And so the Bible says in, in, in the New Testament, wherefore come out from among them and be separate, right? The Bible says that, but, but you think about the children of Israel, they came out from among them, Egypt, thanks to God. However, internally, they were still not separated you know, their, their heart was still with or joined to the false idols and the pagan gods. Because look at how quickly they turned from, yeah, God, I'll do whatever you say to like, give us something. We, we need something physical. You know, yeah, I hear about this spiritual God that's just spirit, but I, I want, where's my physical God at, right? And, and this is how quickly, the, so you can tell what, what's in abundance in their heart really quickly. Because out of the mouth, right, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. And what are they speaking? Give us a, give us a God, little G God. You know, not only that, this verse of scripture said, take the earrings off your sons. You know, everyone in Egypt wore jewelry, even the men and the boys. And, and then that's that's alarming. But that that's the culture. That's what uh, that that was that that was Egypt. That's the world. You know, that that's who um, they they worship their jewelry and their gods. That, you know, <clears throat> they really believe in God that they could, you know, not see. You know, did, did they really believe in that God that they could not see? You know, it sure doesn't look like it. You know, they were so used to worshiping these physical false idols that they became antsy when Moses left. As soon as the man of God walked away, they're like, I'm lost. I, I, give me something to worship. You know, we have to ask ourselves, is the only time we feel spiritually strong and filled with faith, you know, is on Sunday mornings and Sunday nights? Is that the only time where, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm in this to win it. I, I'm God, whatever you want. And then, and then, you know, what about Mondays? When there's no service and pastor isn't there to preach us the word of God, you know, Moses left and look what happened to the, to the children of Israel. And, and then, oh, God, pastor's not there to, to teach us and preach to us. You know, where are we? You know, we can ask ourselves, you know, you know, do we turn to the one true living God in those times or do we revert back to our old ways in search of our little G gods to fulfill the needs that we we might have at that moment? Verse three says this, and all the people break off the golden earrings, which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. So they did. Verse four, it says, and he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, these be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. So not only was a false idol produced here, but it was fashioned after one of their old gods. Right. So so that's interesting. You know, and then that that more likely was the bull. So so it wasn't just any old. Okay, here here's let's 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 make a, an idol. 
No, no, let's make one of the old gods we used to serve. And that can be us right here. You know, when, when we start stepping back and backsliding, we start looking for those old gods that we used to serve. I mean, I know some of us may have experienced that before, you know. It's not always new gods that come up. It's those old things that used to grip us tightly. And you see that here with the children of Israel. They, they, go, they revert back to their old self really quickly. You know, and here's the interesting part of all this and how it applies to us. You know, it's, it's again, it's those old idols that we used to worship that usually try to creep back into our lives. You know, someone who used to be a drinker is at greater risk of getting enticed by a can of beer than they do by a cigarette. Doesn't mean that they can't become a smoker, but guess what? What's going to be coming knocking back at their door? It is, it's a can of beer. It's a, it's a six pack or whatever you want to call it, right? Liquor or whatever it is. That, that's kind of how it goes sometimes. <clears throat> God calls these type of people stiff neck or stubborn in the verse of scripture. You know, they don't give up the world easily. They're stiff neck. They're, they're very stubborn. Even after God delivers them, you know, they're stubborn people. They're stiff neck. They're ready to go back quickly. And I know the children of Israel, as you follow along in Exodus, they, they say, hey, did you bring us out here just for us to die? You could have left us back to, back in slavery, you know. When the man of God is not here, you know, or not there to preach to them the word of God and feeding them, they're lost. You know, they want to go back to their old ways. There's no relationship with God in these types of situations. And it shows here. This is why a, a personal relationship with God is so important. It's paramount in a relationship with God outside of Sunday and services and Tuesday services, right? We got we to have a relationship with God on Mondays, on Tuesdays, on Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays. Every single day of the week, not just during revival services, right? So we are not stubborn and stiff neck. Stiff neck. Verse 7 says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down, for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. You notice something here. God doesn't blame Egypt for these people's lostness. He says they have corrupted themselves. It is their own fault and that's that's a huge deal right there he doesn't say hey these people are still trapped in egypt no they're corrupting their own selves <clears throat> and that kind of goes along when we, we blame the devil for everything you know what hey we're, we're the devil didn't make us do it he can't force us right we do it ourselves verse 8 says this they have quickly uh, they have turned quickly key word there they have turned quickly out of the way which i commanded them you know it it it, it was it wasn't a slow, progressive turning back towards Egypt. You know, but God said that they quickly turned away, right? They, for 40 days, 40, 40 days, 40 nights. You know, they have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Verse 9, And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this pe people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people so very stubborn people you know god was ready to send his wrath upon them as you can read here but thank god for a man of god who would intercede for his people amen thank god for a man of god and over the next several verses we see the example of moses interceding for the people here and if you if you feel so inclined you can read these uh, um and i know many of us have but but kind of refresh ourselves and to see what what moses did is very interesting the next couple of chapters you know, many, many times we, we blame the world for our own demise, you know, where in fact, where we are the ones that are self-destructing, you know, no one forces us to see, do, touch, hear sinful things. You know, the flesh does seek it, you know, you know, it does not want to please God, you know, it cannot please God, you know, it, want, it wants to run back to that old man, you know, to those old ways quickly. You know, it doesn't want to please God. It, it cannot please God. The flesh can't, you know, and, and it's looking for any opportunity to turn back away, not towards repentance, but towards that old, old way of living. You know, the Bible says to repent, to turn away from that and move forward, you know, and this is really important right here because we can repent and turn away. So, so I'm going to repent and turn away, you know, but if we don't move forward after that, then that old past is still right behind us. Can, can you see that? You know, if we repent and turn away, turn my back on, on, but if my past is still here and I haven't moved forward in the opposite direction, guess what? It's going to be here tapping me, you know? However, if we turn away and then begin to move forward after that, then guess what? 
we're leaving that old past in the dust, right? We're, we're looking, we can't even see the past. I don't even recognize the person I, I used to be. And that's a good thing. If I start saying, seeing some, you know, start seeing my old self c come back to light, then guess what? He's probably just right here. I'm, I'm probably probably delving in my my little G gods and, and letting them please me like they once did. You know, if that makes sense. You know, but the Bible says there's hope. Amen. There's hope. It doesn't have to be that way. We don't have to go back to those little G gods. We can continue forward. And, and, and when we sin, we can repent. I would say that he is quick and just to forgive those who confess their sins. We, there has to be a confessing, right? There, there, there can be, uh, uh, um, we're in denial. No, no, no. There's nothing wrong with saying, I am a sinner, right? For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, right? We, we were born into sin, shaped in iniquity. There's nothing wrong with saying that because that is true. But then we don't just say, I'm a sinner and then continue on in sin right? God forgive me, you know, and now I'm moving forward and, and away, away and forward uh, from that sin, right? The Bible says, and such were some of you, you know, we can't forget that we, what we once were, and such were some of you, amen, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of of our Lord. And what is that spirit? That spirit is the Holy Ghost. Amen. And that's that spirit will sustain us. Amen. Amen. Really quick Bible class tonight, right? How many like quick Bible classes? Got to the point really quickly tonight. Amen. Amen. God is good. God is good. And you can see here in this example how quickly it is. If we're not we're not ingrained in truth and, and don't have that relationship with God how quickly we can turn away, just like the children of Israel right here. You know, if we don't let go of that Egypt, we come out of Egypt, but sometimes we, we grab a hold of Egypt and, and, and keep it close to us. No, we got to let everything go, right? And then move forward. All right, all right. You know, let's end in prayer real quick and we'll go ahead and, we'll go ahead and uh, do our gift cards and we'll make a couple quick announcements again really quick for those who didn't hear. But really quick, so we're, we're praying for B, Pena, Michelle Gonzalez, uh, for Tigran, Vardipedian, also for peace and comfort for all those who are experiencing loss and dealing with grief at this time, also for the Sunday School Department, all the ministries here at FTC, also for the LEAD Seminar, you guys, mark your calendars, October 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, this is going to be a great time, great time, you don't want to miss this at all, also for our, our, our revival services that have been going on, amazing move of God, each and every single service, also for Becky Gomez's family dealing with loss uh, during this time. For Pauline Martinez, who has COVID. Also for Brother James Wang, a continued uh, continued uh, a move of God in his life. Amen. We're going to expect good reports uh, from his family. All right. And, and, and let's thank God for this Bible class tonight. God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for another Thursday Bible class. God, we thank you, Lord, for the word of God. We thank you, Lord, for speaking to our hearts, God. God, help us, Lord, to, to, to be able to turn away and move forward, God, from our old our old past, our old man. God, we thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost, God, and making us new creatures in Christ. God, we're thankful and grateful for that today. God, continue to move uh, uh, in each and every single Bible study, every Bible class, all our services, God, all our revival services, God, our seminars that we have coming coming uh, um, up pretty soon. And God, we, we ask and, and pray, God, that you, you continue to move in the life of these people uh, that, that need prayer. God, we're expecting a good report. God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're doing in our lives. God, we give you glory. We give you praise always. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. And really quick, next Thursday, Bible class, we're starting at 745 um, so please remember that time. Uh, if I, um, I mean, you might be able to log in at 740, 735 or so, but we're going to start at 745 next week. And then the following Thursday, Brother Izzy Gary will be uh, uh, doing a great Bible class topic on altar work and how many want to be uh, of 